For latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to Atwalls Outdoors with me, Mike. Today I'm going to a bit of a review video on a product from Van Gogh. So with me here today, I've got the Van Gogh Hexaway Pro Air awning, really. So what we have here is kind of a driver awning designed for be it a camper van or even kind of a more taller motorhome. So the Hexaway has been kind of actually in Van Gogh's collection for the best part of about six years. Uh, and personally for me, it's probably one of my more favourite awnings that uh, Van Gogh do, just because it, it feels like a gazebo, but designed necessarily that can attach to your van, so you haven't got to worry about having to pay for an extra pitch, for example. But then from that point of view, it's also quite versatile that can be used in a gazebo in its own right. So as we have it here, it's kind of almost standalone. Um, it's very quick and simple and easy to pitch. You can see our own Atwalls pitch and packing videos and myself pitching this model. I think it took me the best part of sort of eight minutes to pitch, which means it's perfect for going away for even a weekend, let alone those longer spells with a week or so. One thing, there's a few things obviously the Vang have tweaked with it for the new 23 season going forward. Um, one of which is the fact they've actually sort of changed the specification of the fabric. So we've actually now got a eco fabric. So it's basically um, is utilised sort of um, things like single-use plastics, be it plastic bottles, and essentially what they've then made is a material out of it. From a point of view in terms of the um, specification of the fabric, it's still the same. It's just made from an eco source, so it's a much better, much more uh, sustainable um, sort of fabric overall. So one of the joys of this is how they do it is they take the single-use plastics, basically make it, put it into chips melt it down, extrude it out into yarn and then make your fabric from that as well. So what you've also got built onto it is colour lock as well, so it retains its colour retention over its lifespan, which again is a really nice feature built onto it. The material itself is still a uh, really nice robust material. It's got 420 then your ripstop running directly through it as well to give it a bit more beefness behind it as well. And again, if there is a little tear or anything, it's then isolated to that single point rather than going any further. As, <coughs> excuse me, as the name suggests, it's kind of a hexagonal kind of shape, hence the hex away. Um, but it's, like I said, it, for me, it's very living orientated. It's not something you'd probably look to put a bedroom inside of it, or even though you can put like a divider in there if you really wanted to. You've got, um, you can pump up from a single inflation point. So you've got one point, i.e. here, that pumps it up, but then you've also got um, another two others which you can inflate or deflate it from. So it makes it easier to sort of pack away as well as necessarily pitch. It comes to standing included with a, uh, a double stirrup hand pump, um, which uses Van Gogh's um, airspeed valves. The joys of the airspeed valves are such is that actually the pump can push on, lock on like a bayonet fitting, and then you get an accurate pressure reading on the pressure gauge. You can get it up to speed quite nice and easily, take it off and it auto locks itself off as well. And generally it's one of those things that once you kind of know about it, and know how to use it, generally you get on with it quite well as well. We've got a new kind of colour tone as well with the new fabric, um, which does make it a little bit darker in there. Um, that's probably one sort of slight pro, I would say. Uh, sorry, one slight con in comparison, just because it's a little bit darker inside. So it's with probably more imperative you have the windows open to allow the natural light directly to come in. It doesn't help being inside. I'm sure if we took it outside, it'd be a lot better on that side of things. Other things is a really nice sort of webbing tabbing we've got located down here so it kind of really sort of flaunts where you peg first to make sure you before you inflate just to keep it really quite nice and you've got like a two-tone guy line point as well which works really well so it looks like you've got floating guy lines and makes you kind of very aware of the orange of where the trip hazards directly are there are essentially every other panel there's a door located so you've got one which basically goes into the van one on this side and then one the other panel side down so you've got a little bit of more flexibility in terms of where your entrance is so if the weather does change or turn you can also easily utilize another point in between all of the doors you've got mesh panels built into it as well so again you can maximize your airflow which really works quite nicely so you've got airflow directly in to allow a uh, sort of bug free barrier at night but then you've got privacy curtains located behind it as well. So what that's going to do is when the weather does turn, you don't need to want the airflow or it's a bit colder. You can merely zip it up. And again, you can bring it down a little bit just to kind of give you a little bit of coverage. Of course, take it fully down. And there's basically a little pockets located beneath it where you can roll it into and just kind of a toggle point to keep it nice and neatly at bay. Now, the Hexaway is available in two heights. 
So you either go for a low, which is basically designed for you more your VW kind of size vehicles, uh, and it's got attachment height up to 180 to 210. Or alternatively, you then go for the tall. So the tall is 255 to 295. So it's um, a bit more of a taller bracket. I would probably would say it's more designed for motorhomes than I'd say like midline Takato panel vans. Um, just because the height, the height bracket, I would say, certainly for the tall, in my personal opinion, when you're on the lower end of it, it doesn't quite fit as nicely as you wanted it to. Either the tunnel's a little bit too far away or the heights, you need to increase the height. So often motorhomes, it's sometimes better to throw the straps over the top rather than connecting directly into your wind out itself. There are multiple methods you can look at to attach this. Um, so you either go down lines of, scent, like I said, throw the straps over the top, peg it down the other side of the vehicle, pulls the material up to it, so that's really nice, easy and simple. You either then look to buy like a fixing kit, which will allow you to connect it into a rail or a wind out. Um, you can also look at, there's a sleeve located in the actual um, tunnel section itself. So if you've got a gutter or like a Rima rail, you can put, feed a pole through that and clamp that into the gutter. Uh, also, you've got Velcro tabs, so you can literally Velcro it onto a roof rack or something like that. So lots of flexibility itself. The tunnel, like I said, is located here. So if I just unwind it a little bit. In the tunnel section, you have got a door located as well. So this will allow you to have access into the van without having to go through the awning every single time. And like I mentioned, you've got a little bit of adjustment. So you've, not only is this part elasticated, but then you've got a little webbing strap to kind of just tension it quite nice and neatly as and when you need to. And I'll give you a little bit of a close up of the tunnels attachment options in a second when we go inside. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's bring the camera inside and actually have a look at that now for us. Here we go, okay. So as we look around, you've also got a sky window we've also not mentioned as well. So that works really quite nicely. So it gives you a bit more of a, an opening there. But as you can see, really I see this is how I picture it. Have a table in the middle, chairs all around it. So again, kind of just maximize your sort of space. You could have even more than happily put something towards the side wall like so, just to give you a bit more flexibility. So when it's, what you do have is, like I said, every other panel is a door and the other panels are the windows. So we've got a window, door, window, door, window, door. The doors all have PVC windows in there. And again, still that same curtain to get the privacy. So you still have your natural light, even when it's raining. Um, but you also got your roof windows, which are situated above your mesh windows. So even when you had them up when it is raining, you're getting light directly through there, as well as the actual doors itself. This will be the door that go out into the tunnel section. One thing you do see, it does feel like a bit more like a funnel because you're going from a sort of a, a slightly lower point out to a wide point. Um, so it's really just more about connection to and from the vehicle. You've also got uh, an extra liner in here as well, just to kind of hide the actual um, sort of beam structure a little bit, just makes it a little bit less of an eyesore. But you've also got SkyTrack built into this as well, which is really nice. So it gives you the ability to hang things like um, lanterns or lights, um, you will also have little storage organizers or do whatever you want with it. Whether you want little flexible lights shining directly down, they would be my probably personal preference just to give a bit more uh, natural, well not natural light, but illuminate it as well. And often you tend to find other remote controls so you can alter the brightness itself. The structure of it is really quite nice and boxy. You know, I'm six foot two, can stand up in here quite happily even quite close to the sides. It means that things like tables and stuff can be pushed right to the edge to really maximize your sort of square footage inside. As you see in situ here, we've got uh, the optional carpet you can buy for it. Just adds a bit more kind of softness to the ground, a bit more homely feel. Now with the ground sheet you've got, it is a toggle in, toggle out ground sheet. So you have the flexibility to remove it if you just wanted the grassy area when you're hard standing. Feeling that there's a ground sheet that's supplied with the awning so you can put that down directly. And what you find, it does have a bit of an overlap. So it's designed that it feels like a sewing ground sheet, but you've got the flexibility that you can actually remove it as and when you want to. So let's bring the camera in and get a bit more up close and personal with some of these details that I've been talking about. So as we kind of come in, you can see probably what I'm talking about. So you do have almost panoramic view on a nice day. So you can look out throughout the whole of it. So depending on where you want to go, Skull windows, as you mentioned, they will remain open at all times just because there's no actual covers for them. Um, and that's the wind and that's the mesh window with the little pocket located down the side. 
The main doors can be open from right to left or left to right, so there are toggle points located on either side, so you can have the flexibility of opening it up as you see fit. And as we look up here, we can see we've got a little cover and the Skytrack runs directly through it. So literally, again, every other beam has the Skytrack point, so you can have a sort of extended access to it. And in fact, let's show you that ground sheet scenario. So we've got the carpet down at the moment. And you've got the ground sheet located there and there's a bit of an overlap. So that would be the grass. And then it sort of overlaps a bit again to give that a bit more of a, a seal to it. But you can see what I mean by, say, calling it a gazebo. It really does have that kind of vibe. Works really nicely. Do -do -do. And then we've sort of back around the tunnel section. So now with the tunnel attachments, as previously mentioned, you've got different forms you can look at. So you can either go for the uh, storm strap directly over the top, which come included with it, normally about eight meters long. You've got the beading, which is located there. So you can feed that through an awning rail. You've then got um, a pole, a sleeve built onto that as well. Um, and then you've got Velcro straps, which are a bit further up. So not the best of probably visualizing that. It does help if you've got a seven pair of hands, but hey ho. So yeah, overall, like I said, Generally, I really do like the Hexway just because I think it offers something a bit different. And because it's not a conventional kind of square, I don't feel you feel as enclosed with it. I mean, the height in here is obviously brilliant. And I think that does help to make it feel quite nice and sort of spacious. Um, but I think for me, like I said, if, you, if it was in a more square design, like a lot of the other comparable ones are to it, by having a table up to the side, you wouldn't benefit from having the same amount of space and again because you go from sort of point to point it's a similar sort of depth out but you're kind of going more rounded i don't know if that really makes sense but it does to me um but yeah that is kind of our video review on the brand new hexaway pro for more questions queries concerns feel free to contact us directly if you want any more information on the product be it the the pricing the specifications the pack sizes the pack weights um, feel free to check the link below this video. It'll take you straight through to our website. We've got all the information at the touch of a button. As long as the things like the optional extras you can get for it, be it the, the footprint, the carpet, the privacy screen. Um, and if you wanted to sleep somewhere inside of here, you can buy an additional bedroom sort of free stands. So you can kind of manipulate it to do that. Like I said, for me, it's not really that way in orientated. Um, but if you do have guests or grandkids or whatever, you know, you can accommodate them uh, after an afterthought. Um, but yeah, we'll check out our pitching and packing video as well if you want to see how it goes up uh, and importantly how it goes back in the bag. Uh, that is also quite handy. But um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, hopefully it's been helpful and we should hopefully see you again soon in the next Atmos Outdoors video.